Portland's historic The Black Lady Theater is now taking bookings. Host your next birthday party, concert, networking event, baby or bridal shower, wedding, art show, gala, corporate event, live stage play, audition, and so much more at the one and only The Black Lady Theater. Mention code GODCAST for 15% off your rental fee. Code good for the first time customers only. Valid for a limited time. Call 718-771-0900 to book your event today. <laughs> hey, today is Sunday, September 8th. Make it today's math. Build, destroy. That's right. Build is to add on to the positive and destroy is to take away from the negative. It is a symbiotic process. Okay. <laughs> Not a mean guy, Cass. I'm Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. God free. Uh -huh. We got team you're not a mean in the house. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Pump it up. Pump it up. Real audience in the house. Yes. Uh, and we back. Something about this middle chair feels so much power. Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, well, yeah. don't get power drunk in this motherfucker. I'm okay. good. What do they say about power? Ooh, so power? corrupts. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Uh, Damn. Mm. Okay. That would be a nice absolute mm. vodka commercial. Okay. Nothing? Okay. No, I was good. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, uh, if we want to keep the power, then we have to, you know what I mean? Keep on doing for self. So if we're going to do for self, then we need you to donate. Well, first of all, shout out to the Dollar a Week Club. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Y'all been doing your thing? Yeah. It's building up. Now, of, of course, you know, uh, one of our sponsors, and, uh, who's going to be a sponsor soon, but... Um, you know, long-time contributor and viewer, Freddie Sharkey. Hi, uh, Freddie. She actually just proposed the dollar a segment challenge. Mm, nice. I'm feeling that, you know? I'm feeling Listen, that, too. I'm trying yeah. to do, um, you know, I'm trying to do this so we don't have to get these corporate dollars and, you know, where they can tell us what to say and what not to say and keep it a 100 and so they're not firing motherfuckers for being too black. I know. On a black station. On a black station. Run by white folk. That's right. That's Urban right. View. Um, so, yeah. Uh, man, we got some lovely fried chicken, crack chicken in the house for the for, oh, yeah. for the audience. You it's know all about I mean? fried chicken. Oh, yeah. Some, oh. Who the thought, who, go partake. Who the thought Sh fried Sh chicken Sh would Sh be Sh like the thing right now? Shout like out to ambassadors. So I just put uh I just put Brother Jay here up yeah. on on this uh spot in my hood called Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Now they literally it's literally been dubbed crack chicken. And it's to the point now where I don't even think people fry chicken anymore. Like any any sporting party, any funeral repast, any cookout. Any situation you go to, um, guarantee there, there's a high, there's probably a 99% probability that there's a pan of this ambassador's chicken. And so now, wow. this place closed, you're going to have a whole generation of, 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 you know, brothers and sisters that don't know how to make fried chicken. Yeah, ba basically, pretty In much. Newark. I don't think any, I don't, I honestly don't think anybody fries chicken anymore. You know, there's like, Korean fried chicken now. The Koreans are killing it with their fried chicken. Yep, really? there's Korean. Baltimore got it. There's one, there's one spot. They always, if you go to Baltimore, they say, yo, you get your chicken box? I go, what's that? Man, oh, wow. Baltimore, we get our chicken box. I said, and they go, you, you know how they had an accent? They go, ye need to get you. <laughs> I'm like, yo, have you seen when the Baltimore is? They go like that, ye need to go get you. 
a chicken box. I was like, so these dudes took me to get a chicken box. It's this Korean lady who has the biggest chicken spot in Baltimore, in the hood. And she goes, what do you want? Fried chicken, what do you want? Hurry up, don't waste time. Come on. And she's like, yeah, she's been there yeah. for years. So, and that shit is good. So in Maryland, the you Koreans got the are, Korean chicken. Yeah, the Korean. Now, and here and in Manhattan, too. Now, and this this place, Ambassadors, mm. is is ran by Muslims. So you mean, shit, you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me not one black person wow. thought <laughs> yeah. capitalized on Bl fried chicken in the hood. They, 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 Yo, this, this place sells just wings. No other part of the chicken. Just, and it's they, good as shit. They only it. sell wings. Bomb. And they sell it by the boatload. So you got Vietnamese, you got what's Korean, the, Arab, Arab Korean, chicken. and then you got <laughs> the motherfucking white corporate establishment yeah. selling that Popeyes. Oh, black Popeyes black culture being siphoned through other Popeyes races is fighting and diving over motherfucking their um, counters, and fighting with their babies. What in the hands? fuck is going on with that shit? What's going? On? I don't know, man. Digga, you had the send. I know that's what I'm about to say it's pretty good. She Not, said it was delicious. I was at the mall. It's funny. No, what what made me what made me even fuck with it is. I'm at the mall and I noticed there's like, you know, you're in the food court. Right. There's like the airport ropes lines. For the chicken. For the chicken sandwich. Damn. They had, they had, I saw, well, caught my, what caught my eye was the rope. It wasn't now, it actually wasn't crowded. Did but, they have a bouncer? But it was the rope. No, my, it was two this security. This is my chance to use my celebrity bouncers. It was two security. This is my chance to use my celebrity. I'm going to cut the line. I'm going to cut the rope. And you go through the rope to order the chicken, and then you get in another line with your receipt to pick the food Ooh, up. They were trying to get all and extra did you say I'm Rod bougie. Digger? No, I didn't say I'm Rod Digger. I, I just, I just wanted to see what it was about. No, because it wasn't a. It, the line actually wasn't crowded, but I was just like, I keep hearing about this chicken. No, what did catch my eye was it said sandwich three ninety nine. I'm like, oh shit, let me see what this sandwich is about. This Man. chicken they've been talking about, but uh, what? No, nah, so, so I got two. I was like. I was like, let me try the classic and the spicy. Well, she got two. She got, got two chicken. No, but it was like real friends. But but I didn't eat real no sandwiches chicken. myself. I was with like I was with like four other people, so we just cut it in pieces. Like, two I, sandwiches I, from four. I don't believe that shit <laughs> at all. Fuck you, know, all ten of them shits. No, two no, sandwiches no. For we just four we, sandwich. We just took different, you know, chicken sandwich. Cut it up in pieces. Like, like, like what you think? Spicy classic. I will tell you this: spicy wins by a landslide. Spicy always wins. Well, see, I, I stopped eating Popeyes when I found out that they fry all their chicken in beef lard. <laughs> okay? Oh. So I oh. just can't get past the word lard. Even though it's beef. Beef lard? Like, oh, I don't damn. eat beef. So, yeah. But, damn. First of all, why do you want to <laughs> contaminate the chicken? Yeah, the that's chicken, bad. The whole other animal. They're like, trying to kill I'm, us. I'm yeah. believing that I'm going and buying some chicken, and you telling me I'm eating but cow it's, chicken? But basically? it's fried chicken, like, man. It's all dirty. You just got to suck it up and eat it. I want me a sandwich. If I made a conscious choice to say I don't eat, eat beef, meat. right? I don't eat, eat red meat. meat. Yeah. Right. And I'm eat, and I'm making a conscious choice that so I'm only eat chicken. Why would you do that to me? Like like <laughs> do it to you. I think You're taking it that, personal. Why you gonna do it to me? Why you gonna do that to Lord Jamal? Why are you gonna do it to Lord Jamal? <laughs> <Lord Jamal? laughs> like like when you know damn well he don't eat. Protect Jamal at all costs. <laughs> make sure we have the regular ones for Jamal. Like 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 the gods know okay like like if you had knowledge yourself back in the days it's got way better now but back in the days one of the main things we was taught was to read the ingredients on everything yeah because you would find out yo they would put swine in in like everything. shit that you would not even yes. like cereal like yeah. why is why would you put swine in broccoli or they something just do like, it they just do it they and just like act it. like they're helping you with it's, it's like, like, baby's gel. milk with some pork like, in it it was just in all jello Oreo yeah they're Ritz crackers what is, they, like, they've they're since trying to kill out, everybody though. they've since taken it out and I don't know what's because the gods used to be like writing letters and shit to companies. I don't know if that shit really worked, <laughs> but I'm telling you, they started taking that shit out of companies. Wow. And I also feel like that's part of the power of the mind. When you start to, 
when your mind starts to go somewhere, you can shape your world. You see what I'm right. saying? That's so right. when you don't fuck with some shit, now you see how the world is getting more like vegan and da 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 da. Yeah. Like I feel like the stronger minds kind of steer it that way. But anyway. Yeah, this this whole this is some crazy shit right now. This chicken yeah, sandwich. I, I, I'm I'm like, so so I to, never thought about chicken to sandwich. To my understanding, I heard it's it's sold out until like Yes, you're man. creating an app so that you'll know on your phone when it's back in stock. <laughs> what is it gonna go? So so hang on, let me <laughs> that was gonna go what the heck? Oh, oh, shit. My niece. So let me what the heck? My oh, niece shit. told me Yo, that man, I gotta get the fuck out of here. What the heck? What the heck? The chicken sandwiches is back. Chicken is red. What's it gonna do? What? My my niece told me that chick. No, but uh, she is Popeyes. I guess. I'm strong to the spinach. Good. I'm wrong to the spinach. Good. I eat chicken. me spinach. When when Popeye spinach was Popeye's spinach. I'm sorry for cutting you off. I'm just saying, Popeye ate spinach. I am what I, I am, and that's all that I am. Chicken? Hey, remember this? Remember that? Remember the little song he used to do when he was cleaning up? Yo, Papa used to say a lot of crazy shit. Remember, he used to say, "I never made love in technical." He used to go, "Oh boy, this guy has a problem." Hold on. So did you want to say something? Sorry. Sorry. That we cut off her wisdom. Oh. We cut off your wisdom. What'd you say? What you want to say? Raw, sorry. Um, no, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh, my niece said Chick Fil A started it. That's all. But yeah, what did she say? Chick Fil A. That's why I was like, how did this start, though? Um, well, Chick Fil A was Chick-fil- supposed to be the king of chicken sandwiches. They were yeah. like for they, years, and they, people um, were screaming about Chick Fil A. So I guess they're making they're making chicken on the bone now. Okay, was it Chick Fil A? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. It wasn't in response the to this. So, oh, you gonna no, no, do what no, we no, do? No, 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 no. Oh, then we going to do it. No. How about that? Chick-fil-A announced that they were making chicken on the bone. The chicken sandwich from Popeye's is supposed to be in response to the to, chicken on the bone. To the chicken so on the like bone. So it's like a rap battle. Right. So you want to do what we do? I right, we're going to do what you do. Well, this right. we're going to do. So, so, Lord, and that's what so, the kids said. You know, you so got this be I, called beef? <laughs> I'm just saying, is this a beef? <laughs> would this battle chicken between Chick fil A and Popeyes be called a beef? I mean, beef always seems well, to well, come around. Hang on, let's talk about the oh, no. <laughs> supposed $25 million in free advertising that Black Twitter apparently gave um, this chicken sandwich um, by, you know, Singing his praises all over. The- oh my God! You eat this motherfucking sandwich. This is the greatest sandwich in the mouth. And you know, we, we and if and, and if we get excited, people will know it's legit because like there's that black woman that is the Popeyes lady. You know, she goes, "Honey," you know, she, she does. Right, they got she her. Not so, you the know, real, or the real Popeyes baby, lady. But if she was white, I would not good. believe the chicken was good. I'm sorry, even though I don't want a black woman there, I believe the chicken Google is good. The lady I believe that it's really hers. Owns the Popeyes. Because she goes, honey, my chicken is the. I'm like, I believe that shit. <laughs> honey, I put special spices in that motherfucker. <laughs> my but if it was a white lady that said, if a white lady goes, let me tell you, my chicken is delicious. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. That shit look bland as shit. Don't you try that with me, Florence Henderson. I want to hear that shit. <laughs> but if she was like, but when you got somebody <laughs> going, honey, this chicken, whoa, with the force. Yo, with the four C I'm, like, oh, God, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> it sucks. Me. But the black boy makes chicken. me believe. <laughs> boy, <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> it's racist, but I want like, the black woman makes me believe it. That's what's fucked up. And that's why they use her. Though. I know. That's she goes, honey, her. and she goes, honey. Someone wrote that. We're gonna have you say, honey. Could you just say a little more, honey? Blaster? She was like this, honey. No no no, 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 no. You know how to say it. <laughs> you know how we want it. <laughs> you know how we want to hear it. That black cadence. Do I have Give it to us. Cut it like that. Cut. We, we, like need, we need a little child. Like <laughs> yeah, let's put child in that. Yeah, now do it the way you do it. Oh, you and honey and child went together like, they're, they're starting like to, sugar and spice, like no, honey they're, child. They're, they're, like that they're was actually a 70s doing that thing in a bunch of commercials now. Are, like huh? I don't know if y'all Oof. noticed it, but I just saw the I just saw a, a, a random like What's Verizon right? commercial. Oh no! And the mother is Where talking we to the son, and oh, the, no. 
and the, the, the mother's like, Less. hey, Less. I got to pay my phone bill. I'm like, why you got to pay your phone bill? Oh, like, yeah, it's yeah. like it's Verizon. They're like, hamming it up. Yeah, it. yeah. So, so, I'm starting so, to notice that a lot geez. now. So in other news, yes. Um, where we want? You think it's a distraction from keeping um, the, to, to, so they don't know that the Amazon's burning up in Congo? Oh, and oh that was one of the points. All uh, the forest fires are burning up. They're burning up all that, but they tried to save Notre Dame. Remember that little church in Paris? Mm-hmm. Even African nations sent money to restore that church. But what about now Angola? Now they're calling Congo? the Amazon rainforest in Brazil the lungs of, of the, the earth. Planet. Damn right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, why? Now, this thing has been burning for like weeks, weeks or some yeah. shit, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Why would not just Brazil, but like, why would not all the nations come together to try to marshal their resources to put this fire out? Because. Like, it was only just recently that the Brazilians said, oh, let's send a plane with some water over this motherfucker. And try to put it out. Right. Like, what if, what if uh, all the nations sent planes with water? It would go out. It would be out by now. But somebody made a deal because these. I always blame it on old white men. Something is happening where they're trying to deforest that, pl- which is Come some on. silly ass shit. But the the white men, old white men, I blame all of them. Because they always say, "Well, how do you know?" I go, "I know because of your hiring practices. You don't hire us." For shit. Like if I literally said, hey, old white man, I'd like a job to ruin the world. Can you got any jobs open? <laughs> no, like, no, no god damn it, it, get out of here. No, you know, they don't hire us well, for all shit. All those jobs are taken. Those are jobs are taken. <laughs> so yeah, so I, Brazil is the blackest country outside of Africa. It's the blackest. Yes. Outside of Africa. So it's because it's black people. That's why they're letting it burn. They don't give a fuck. That's why. It's well, a, well, I don't know why we beat around the bush. Well, it's because you're black. Well, we're going to burn it. They're saying that... Um, niggers! They're you're saying niggers. that they're trying to industrialize... It's the, anyway. The, you're like, niggers, yeah. and we want it to burn. So here's a chicken sandwich. Get out! They, because they're black. That's it. If there was a European... Oh, that would have been saved by now. Well, they're trying to... I mean, well, the, you know, the way it's being told or reported is that there's the president is... You know, kind of like a Trump guy. Yeah, of course. Pro yep. business, real racist. And yeah, that. and um, basically they're just trying to clear a way to like industrialize the of area. Of course they are. And there was, so. did you see the footage of the little native lady that lives in Amazon? Little native, right? Indian app. She's like, this, this is not right. We, you can't do this to us. And she's just a white man going, you're done. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. Congo and Angola is burning up too. Yeah. Really? The, the yeah. Af- there's fires in Africa bigger than this yes. Am- wow. than the Amazon. Yeah, yeah, man. That yep. you're not hearing about. Wow. Africa. Yep. In they Angola. Are, Angola and yep. the Congo. And yep. the Congo's wow. been raped how many times? That's all they do. King Leopold and his crew. <laughs> well, speaking of raped, um, allegedly. <laughs> Good wait, wait, wait. Also, wait, wait, wait. All that transition. Let's keep and the rape going. In case people don't know, the Amazon is responsible for twenty percent of the of the planet Earth's oxygen. oxygen. Yeah, yeah. That's because like, trees and, give off oxygen. And old white men want to get rid of that. They they don't want anybody. They only want two elephants left. They want to have one giraffe. They want one bird. Couple black. They want everybody gone except. So them. they're already making us pay for water since they putting lead in all the water. God, Pretty soon we're gonna be paying for air. Remember, remember where you heard it first. They gonna so, segregate so, air. So, so, so speaking of rape, apparently, allegedly, um, Richard Pryor had put a hit out. Oh, shit. On Paul Mooney. Get off my because, son, Mooney. <laughs> uh, Paul Mooney allegedly raped Richard Pryor Jr. He's like this, nigga. I didn't do when shit. When he was. <laughs> When I he think was a minor. <laughs> nigga, you lying. I never did it. <laughs> yeah, niggas just want to talk that's, that bullshit. Paul right? <laughs> Mooney impersonation. Niggas lying nigga. because he's mad that he, that he wasn't funny. Nigga. nigga. And then he's like, nigga, please, you're just trying to get some attention. <laughs> Your Wait, father was funny, me. but the rest of the children were garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, that was your finger in your own ass because you fucked yourself. <laughs> well, Rich was like, is this nigga fucking my son? Shit. Goddamn. I can't believe the shit. 
It's like, nigga, no one fucked your son. <laughs> your son is ugly as fuck. I have taste. Okay. <laughs> so, man, I'm going to kill that nigga shit. Get your ass off my son booty shit, nigga. He's like, nigga, stop it, please. Nobody fucked his son. Have you seen his son? Nigga, please. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. I know these niggas are always complaining. <laughs> we cannot laugh. Oh, at 50 the years, nigga, the minor. He heard me. <laughs> well, he's an old, he's an old man now. Actually. Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need y'all to stop laughing right now at the rape. Of uh, no, minor. not the. No, no we're, we're not laughing, laughing at. No, we're not laughing at the okay. rape. At the but Paul Mooney be like, he is, Paul Mooney denied it. He's like, no, nigga, please, <laughs> no. <laughs> Nigga, shut the fuck up. Okay. Get me a goddamn drink. Shut the fuck up. Nigga is lying. Richard Pryor Jr., you wish you were funny as your father, but you weren't. But you're not. <laughs> nigga, did you fuck my son? Shit. Whoop your ass, nigga. <laughs> Apparently, what saved um, your boy Paul mm. was that. Uh, Rich burned himself up. Right, that's what saved him. Yeah, me, like, 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 Rich had put a hit out on this man. Like, mm -hmm. again, do it. What'd you do? Say, it. I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. Jack. Do it, you fuck ah, ah, yeah. ah, shit! Fuck it. So, Get me some water, nigga. Shit. Yeah, Rich was tight, you know, because he felt like this dude was his friend, and this is now yeah. according to his uh, bodyguard, bodyguard Sean. Sean. He was in the he was in the uh, the documentary Sean Richard Pryor. Omega Sean Omega. Khan, something like that. Yeah. Um and that dude's legit too. He's and legit. so yeah, he's telling the shit and, and um Yeah, it sounded like Rich was tight, man, and, and put a million dollar in. I don't even know well. But they was like Because I feel like if it was true, I, I wouldn't necessarily need someone to do a hit. Like I would just be ready to kill this motherfucker, like yeah. to be honest. Like Yeah. But then how old was Rich the junior? Yeah, Jeez. And and he said, yeah. And it was like, I mean, was it consensual? So, how could I be consensual if I was a teenager or some shit? He said. And so did uh, Richard Pryor's fifth wife. Right. The All white one confirmed that it happened to the white lady. So I, whoever the, the white lady don't was. play. Let let the record reflect that. Like I didn't necessarily know for sure that Paul Mooney was gay because you didn't like, know. I mean, he, well, he, he, had, I knew, he had like, he had like family. I thought he went both ways because he's the way he like, talked. Like, like he, he has sons and he shit. He was acting. That's what I'm saying. He's yeah. married and and. Well, and gay dudes do that said, all the time. And now he tries to act like he's like more conscious type of comic almost. He comes out with like women, like he's like almost trying to be a pimp or some shit. And but I'm like, yo, this dude moved too feminine. I'm like, he gotta be. This guy, he got to be gay. But then I seen some of his early, early, early stuff. He was. That's when you know this nigga is, oh, oh, he's gay. Man. Yeah. Like, you just didn't say nothing back oh, then. Oh, yeah. But see, like, we was too young to see that Paul right. Mooney. We, we learned of him later. But just so the way he talked. He's kind of, was hiding it. Like, yeah, like. Well, his head would be like, nigga, listen, nigga. Yeah, like, uh-uh. No, you didn't. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, fuck all that, man. <laughs> he didn't talk like, hey, man, Paul Mooney, man. He's like this, nigga, please, okay? <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> That's how he talk. Well, Even listen, when he sits on the if, chair, if you know? If he did it, it's some foul shit. You don't be yeah, out here yeah, raping that, little kids. Yeah, raping like, little, I can't. If you want to be gay, that's one thing, but to be, you know. But a lot of times they'll say like. Pedophile. But they'll say like pedophilia, like sometimes yeah. when they see, when you see gay parents, they'll say, oh, that's going to affect the child because they might do, they, they always put pedophilia with being gay too. It's like a thin line. You go. You think, I don't know, because like you, you no, see definitely. the priests do it, priests do it with the altar boys, mm -hmm. you know, it's that fucking with boys, that's homosexuality in a way. That is, but, but that, it's there's, like, there's definitely, there's definitely, filthiest statistically, level. statistically there's definitely more heterosexual cases of, of child molestation and pedophilia than than homosexual. Yeah, but why is it always the same? Nah, no, that's probably just it's the same more, sex more all the time. When, when, when you like do boys and you're and you're a man. Like now what's that? That's called pederasty. pederasty. To be a pederast. Pederast? pederast? Mm hmm A pederast is relationship between an older man and a younger boy. Pederast. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> also known as Hollywood. Man. Um, Dan, oh, what did I want to... Disgusting. Shouts out to Rhapsody for dropping a new album. <laughs> Shouts out to Rhapsody. You said Queen Latifah got something? Queen Latifah's got a verse on there. It's kind of hot. Bars, yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, Latifah? she... There you yeah, go. Yeah, she, she's busting. She needs to break. She needs to drop. I like something. to talk about music sometimes. <laughs> if music is good, <laughs> okay. <laughs> talk about it. What kind of song? Any that's, pedophilia that's all, music? That's all I got. Any? <laughs> Get you off my side, man! Oh fuck! What? 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 You got the chicken. We got the prior. There was something else. Chicken sandwich. Got chick and Chick Fil A. What's funny about what? Chick Fil A is that the dude is is homophobic. The owner of Chick Fil A, he don't like the gay well, thing. Well, it's not that he's homophobic. First it's, of all, I don't like. But that he's word. a Bible man. He's religious. Yeah, he's religious, and it goes against the right, Bible. Because in the Bible it says Sundays, homosexual. You know. But Chick Fil A has the gayest name ever. Anyway, that's the gay Chick Fil A. <laughs> Come on, how are you gonna have a gay name? Chick Fil A. 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 Chick I don't know if y'all watched it, but y'all need to go watch it. What? The Dave Chappelle special on Netflix. I got it. Is it dope? Juicy Fire. Smoulet Juicy. is all I'm going to say. Juicy Smoulet. Yo, that shit. <laughs> the genius was that so is Dave Chappelle. Yo, Juicy Smoulet. Let me just Just tell you. Slow clap for him. Let's just like let's Dave just Chappelle. Him. Listen, all I want to say is. This man was so genius because he was able to touch subjects in 2019 that you're not supposed to be able to talk about at all. Every subject. And had every, everybody dying. Every subject. I don't care if you was the target of it. You, you was going to laugh at your shit. own self. Like, like, it was, it was great. It nice. Was so well put together. Two minutes. Stitches. Um, yes, I recommend go check out, what's the name of that one? Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Sticks Stones. And stones. Go ahead, Chappelle, hey. Sticks and Stones, new fucking uh, special on Netflix. Trust me, you're going to laugh hard. That's dope. Um, yeah, you I almost are. suggest that you better see it by the next time uh, you watch this show because we very mellow may well be saying some of the jokes now. And yeah, then it's too late. Yeah. Spoiler alert, motherfucker. So the next time you come here, we might be talking about Juicy Smoulet <laughs> and the alphabet people and all that motherfucker shit that he was talking about. Yeah, um, yo, Juicy he, 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 he nailed it across the board. Like, Juicy it, Smoulet. whatever your vice is, <laughs> he's suicidal, like whatever. He got it. Nice. Got everybody. Well, listen, we're about to take a break real quick. Um, we got a guest coming up. Uh, we have an author, okay? Uh, my brother, Dr. Supreme Understanding, okay? He's written a, quite a few books, but this book, he's quite well known for. This is the book that Tragedy said he walks around with. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Knowledge of Self, a collection of wisdom on the science of everything in life. And it's edited by Dr. Supreme Understanding, a law, CBS, A Life, a law, and soon as a law, and a forward. By Lodge Jamal, brand new man. Hey! <laughs> you know what I mean, Godcast? We'll be right back with Supreme Understanding. Yeah! Hey! Welcome back to You Know What I Mean, Godcast. I'm Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. God free! Okay, we got Team You Know What I Mean in the house. Yeah. We got our hey. Yo, audience. We here in Brooklyn. Heart of Brooklyn at the Black Lady Theater. Um, and right about now, we have our special guest with us. Author, publisher, um, God Body, Supreme Understanding. Peace to the God. Peace. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. Clap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, like I said before we left, the God is the author of a book that many of you may know about. It's called Knowledge of Self, a collection of wisdom on the science of everything in life. And I happen to have a foreword uh, in this book. 
Um, you know, how, how, how many years has this book been out now? It came out 10 years ago to this, like 10, 10 years. years ago. Wow. Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. And I've got to say, like, a lot of people have hit me up about this book in that 10 years mm. and just how it, it, it's helped them. And, and this was a, a pivotal book for a lot of people yeah. as far as trying to find knowledge of you know the five percent nation and just a basic understanding of where we come right, from. right just get some clarity right so just give us a little understanding on this and i mean i see all these other books that you've either written or published correct how right. many have you written and how many have you published i think i've written about 10 and we've published about 30. wow yeah we published about 30. so this started out with this book right here that's this your right first here. book yeah, it's the first one it's how to hustle and win this book came out because I was working in the community. I was working with young people. And um, as you know, 5%ers do, we teach through life lessons. We tell stories, we use examples, and it resonates. But being that I had a background in education, I was getting frustrated with not being able to reach more people. So I'm like, I gotta figure out a way to disseminate this. You know, the 5%ers the, the before me had laid down the foundation through music. So I had seen the pioneer example of teaching through music and distribution through music and independent music distribution. So we used the same model for the books. We sent books out. I got books printed up. I ain't had no money. I took out a credit card advance. I was going to say, wait, how do you Man. say you sent the books out? But how do we how do you even get to the from, publishing? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the, that's it's a journey. important steps that people need to I'll know explain it, yeah. in order for them to do for self. Yeah. So let, yeah, that's uh, self-empowerment comes with self-employment. You know what I mean? You can't do one without the other. Mm. So just like you getting free, we getting free. Let's teach how to get free. Mm. So one of the things that um, I help people with now is publishing their own books. We can even do that by phone now because wow. we so wise. I mean, you got to think about how we talk. Like our talk game is splendid. You know what I mean? Prolific. Right. We could spit this freestyle and just come up with something that's just, you know what I mean? Visionary. So we can take that. We can turn a transcription into a book. We can edit it. We got a proven formula by which we do it. And then um, we lay it out. We make it look good. We pick good quality paper, good quality covers, design a beautiful cover. You know, I got a background in art, so I've always been an artist. I used to do graffiti when I was a kid and went into Photoshop when it came out. So we started making covers that was different, that would speak to people, and everything on the cover is covered in the book. So, like, everything would, 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 was meant to be a piece of art that would catch you. And so we kind of brought books back, because you remember when nobody was reading? Nobody cared about knowledge itself. After, like, by 2005, 2006, the music wasn't speaking to knowledge. The music was dry, everything materialistic, everything was self-hatred. So it was like everybody was dead about to go deep into the grave. Right. When the books came out, like people was happy to be back on the corner talking about knowledge again. And even if it wasn't in the streets, it was in the jails. And it was so heavy in the prisons that people was coming home different. Right. And, and wasn't going back. Books in jails are still like... Man, go life. Go. Yeah. Like it's go. Yes. yes. And books like these in jail really resonate That's with right. those because sometimes you have to really hit rock bottom in order for a certain knowledge to resonate with you, to finally get it. You know, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is a lot of people that end up getting knowledge of self, like they might have been so foul prior to that. You see what I'm saying? Like you had to be so negative to even want to go in that in that opposite they, they, direction what russell simmons said he said we came from under the jail hmm. you know what i mean so I, I respect that because one of the one of my brothers told me the guys don't come down from heaven we come up from hell hmm. so i could feel that because i'm bengali hmm. a lot of people don't know what i am or what i come from like i'm bengali i'm an immigrant's child so bengali is like india it's Bangladesh. India. Right? we don't even have no land no more how about that wow bengal don't exist bengal wow. don't exist Bengal is split between Bangladesh, Bangladesh, which is Muslim, and then West Bengal, which is in India, which is Hindu. Right. And it wasn't created by us. Those splits was created by the same people that split up Africa. English. And, uh, you see what I'm European, saying? The yeah. British, the Europeans, yeah. they do that. Wherever they go, they see a people that's hard to control. They say, well, how can we divide you? So, you know, my people had to go through that because my people was one of the last Indian tribes or groups of people to resist Europeans. When Alexander the Great showed up to Bengal, he seen us waiting with 20,000 war elephants fully stocked with armor, and he took his white ass on back. Mm. Yeah. So we come from that history. We was always resistance fighters. And so the way you do with people that fight for freedom is you split them up. 
have hating themselves and having hating each other. So how do how do how do how do we? Because I want people to understand how. Yeah. You know. You said, all right, I'm going to just start putting books out. So how did you even know the format of how to do that? I got a crazy story because, like, like, I got bad grades in writing all through school. Mm. Like, you might not notice, listen to me, but I'm not a native English speaker. Mm. English is not my first language. Like, literally, the way I talk is from Americanizing myself, like studying. Because I grew up speaking Bengali, so, like, by five years old, I realized going to school, this shit ain't going to work. Fuck that, I ain't about to get clowned. You know what I mean? They was clowning me. Because we say yes is ha, ne, no is nah, right? So they was like, nah, 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 nah. And I was like, oh, fuck these little kids. <laughs> so I said, Ma, let me tell you, I can't bring no more Indian food to the school. You got to give me a ham sandwich. She said, what? I said, you got to give me a ham sandwich. She said, you never had ham before in your life. I said, I don't even know what it is, but I want one. <laughs> wow. It was the market. See, they market every day. If you're growing up in America, you're getting marketed to every day. You're getting taught how it is to be a successful American, no matter what you is. If you're a kid in America, you're getting taught how to be one. And if you got a parent that came here believing in the American dream, they don't know that you're being lied to. They're like, yeah, do what them good people telling you. They don't know you being preyed upon. Mm. Right. So that's why a lot of immigrants, they learn to conform. They learn to shuffle down. You know what I mean? Be like the, the brown pig that don't stand out. I Me, mean, I could never figure that out. I was always a ghetto Indian. Even the other Indians didn't know what to think of me. So, you know, going that route, I was always the degraded one, the one that felt broken down. So I was always like, man, I know what it's like to feel like nothing. So I can relate to everybody else in the hood. I ain't never felt like I was better. Hmm. So then when now the self hit me, it hit me real, like, like it wasn't no special thing. It was like the brother that was teaching me was like, Yo, you seem smart, but you need this much better than anybody else. And it saved my life. So I always felt compelled to give back what it gave to me. Like, man, this, this now saved my life. And I know that just giving, just giving somebody a sense of themselves could turn their whole life around. So why not, you know what I mean? So, so what made you not try to like, I don't want to put a book out. I'm going to go to like some publishers mm. in Manhattan and try to like shop my story and see if they'll put it out for me. Why didn't you do that? What, 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 what gave you the wherewithal to just say, you know what, I'm just going to publish my own fucking book and put it out like that. I think it's just being a garbage baby, bro. Mm. Just being a garbage pale kid. Y'all know what that mean, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older than I look. You know what I mean? I'm 38, all right? I'm 38, that might not look like it. I don't eat meat. So, you know what I mean? I ain't had a chicken sandwich in a minute. So, you feel me? Um, you know, um, but what I'm going to say is I know about a lot of old so garbage pail kids. Those are little cards, playing cards. They're just a bunch of kids that came out the garbage. You know what I mean? So, I always looked at myself like one of them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like a little dumpster baby. Because, you know, some of us, we felt like an abandoned generation. There wasn't nobody there to raise us. Our parents were swallowed up by Reaganomics and drugs and other things like that. They didn't know what to give us, and they didn't have no emotional guidance. They, my, our parents didn't even learn how to deal with their own feelings. And their parents didn't even learn how to, they had feelings. They just had to deal. So we the first generation, low-key, to be able to talk about our feelings. And go back to our mama with some nerve and talk about, you didn't love me right. How dare you? I ain't never been a generation till now that can say that. You know, but we, we there now, but we got to do that because for our babies, we got to be able to say, hey, I'm fucking up right now. I get, I trip out a little sometimes. I'll be depressed sometimes. Yeah, you know what? If you see me drinking, don't do that. Don't do it like I be doing. I be, I'm fucking up right now. Because you could do that with your babies now that we growing, right? Like, we that level of parent, which our parents couldn't do. Which means even though we a little fucked up, our baby's going to turn out better. <laughs> so that's, in a way, like, that's, like, always been my ethic with teaching. Like, whenever you open the conversation, shit going to get better. So when I started thinking, like, man, I want my babies to have a good life. Man, I gotta create a better world. I gotta put out a book on history, on fucking science, on how to treat women, whatever. Because if I got daughters and I don't do that, then it's my fault when something happened to them. That's what Knowledge Self did for me. Like, it was like everything on you. Everything. So, what are some of your titles? Let's, let's uh, yeah, take us, take us through here. the. You okay. Know, okay. Oh, see, yeah, because I'm giving out gifts too. Some of these. I'm giving out yeah, that's a classic, on, right? This is my shit. Yeah, I put out books that we was reading when we was kids. Like, yo, what? So, the Kybalion? The Kybalion, bro. Oh, Them is the seven I, hermetic I, principles I, I that govern the whole universe. I told, okay. Yeah, if you had a metaphysical mind person, you know about it. I didn't tell, I told you about it though, right? 
the ancient princess. The Cabalion yeah. is a good fucking book. Um, yeah, you definitely should check this out. So you published? I republished it, and I and I showed people how it came from. You know what I mean? The original people. I showed people where it came from in Egypt. Right. You know what I mean? Who was the author of it? Right. With the you know, three connected it back to them. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Because when the three initially put it out, that was a white boy. Right. That was three white guys that did that. Mm. See what I'm saying? But they didn't give credit to who it came from, who was Jehudi. Right. You know, also known as Thoth. So we took it back there. Because that was a living man. Right. These guys, we talk about, I think we got the book Black God somewhere here. We're talking about gods and goddesses. We're talking about living men and women. We're talking about people whose reputations were so prolific that 2,000 years later, they were still talking about it. 2,000 years later, they were still looking at the example like, wow, what a great person. You know, so like Yogi Science of Breath. I remember reading this years ago. Yeah. This is a republished book. Yeah, man. I republished that too. Found out who the original young because that was a white guy too. Really? Yup. Yup. So we was republishing old books and old classics because we could. There's a um, you know, you go through the process, I can go back and republish a book that's a hundred years old and claim it like it's mine. Legally. Uh -huh. Wow. wow. Because remember, what, we, what I come from is how to hustle and win. I'm not going to be trying to turn a rusty lock 360 degrees, one degree at a time. I come from that school of picking the lock. Mm. I'm trying to pick the lock. So you could take an old book and yeah. republish it. That's deep. How about this? We republish a book nobody even know Frederick Douglass ever even made called The Heroic Slave. <coughs> wow. Frederick, Frederick Douglass made a novel where he said violent revolt against slavery is right. And he used the example of the American Revolution and all them to prove it. And it, he talked about a slave revolt upon the slave ship um, Amistad, right? And um, he documented it and he advocated for it. And nobody ever thinks this about Frederick Douglass because they don't know what kind of heart he had. They always think that he just rode and he was pacifist. But nah, he was a revolutionary too. And this book that he wrote actually contributed to like a lot of other people later on being real revolutionaries. Mm. I had to dig that up. So we published it with another book that really contributed to a lot of revolutionary action, David Walker's Appeal. To the colored citizens of the world. To the world. This man, this Guns black man. To the slaves of the United States of America. That's right. And this is before slavery ended, he was advocating for, for revolution. And he was saying, you are the original people of the world. You built Egypt. You built all these empires. You've been degraded. You've been broken down. You need to know yourself and you need to rise up, however it takes. And it was this book that came out before Nat Turner's revolt and every other revolt. They used to find this book sewn into people's jackets. Mm. They was hiding them, smuggling them in their jackets. They had a little, that's why I brought books back because books is like, it's a major thing. Right. Like books was sewn into jackets like a secret book. Like this book was a revolutionary guide. And if you had it, you was that guy. Well, yeah, you would get, I mean, as slaves, you would get whipped for learning, for what? knowing how oh, to yeah. read and yeah. getting caught with books. That's right. Think about it, in prison right now, most of these books is banned. You go to the hole for having one of these books. That book, you, look, this is a science book you hold, Godfrey. Science itself. It's a science book. We're talking about physics and all that. You will go to the hole for having this book. 23-hour lockdown, security threat group. You ain't even got to be a 5 percenter. You just got to be reading that book. Any one of these books, even that one. Why? There you go. Good question. Why? Why? Same reason you just said, because they'll whip you for learning how to read. This book is in Spanish. Can't have it. The whole book in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happened was the people in Puerto Rico and Mexico, when they learned about how to hustle and win, they was like, we need this. We'll translate it. So I had my readers so translate it. How to hustle and win in, in Spanish. Spanish. Yep. Wow. Completely independent. No publishing company. Wow. My readers translated it for me. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And That's then sad. we went to Puerto Rico and Mexico and gave them out for free. That's so dope. And painted the universal flag up on the wall in La Perla. La Perla is the hardest hood in Puerto Rico. Wow. And they, they gave us the, you know what I mean? At Granted Access put the flag up. Wow. So, I'm interested in this title, Rap, Race, and Revolution. Oof. What are, what are we talking about in here? You can't win this game. You have to change it. Mm. What, what are we talking about here? So, like, hip-hop culture is just a microcosm for the black experience in the world. Okay. You know what I mean? It's just a, like a small example of what you've really seen. So, all those three, type, three things is related. Rap, race, and revolution. Mm. Because the rap is just the voice of the language that needs revolution. Even in Palestine, they're doing what? Rapping to speak to their revolution. In France, what are all the revolutionary people doing? They're rapping. They're not singing country music. They're rapping. Country music is for when you what? Depressed. 
You feel me? You, you sad, you miss your girlfriend, that's when you do country. But you want to rise up, it's only hip hop. So hip hop is the language, and unless it's really spoken to by us, for us, clearly from people that really know this perspective, then it's going to be marketed by somebody else to be something that's counter-revolutionary. Mm. So it become about consumption. And it become about a lifestyle, like thinking you're part of a team that you're not part of in real life. People thinking they're part of a community that don't really give you sugar when you ain't got no sugar. Mm. Your community is only the people that can give you sugar when you run out of sugar. So that's, that's like, for me, like, when I listen to a lot of people, people going through, I be wanting to be funny about it, but then I be worried because I be like, don't you got babies? Like, yo, the kid might not be around in 50 years. This discussion we had, it might not be so relevant. Because this, I'm thinking about the babies living in a world of total chaos 50 years from now. Right. And what can we do? What can we teach? And what can we be so that they be okay? Because if we're not okay, they're going to be like them kids in that movie, It. You know that movie, It? Mm -hmm. They grow up not ready to confront their demons. Mm -hmm. The demon going to take you. This life ain't about to get no easier. Do it look with this Trump administration like it's about to get easier? Who about to make it smooth? Bernie? <laughs> what? I don't believe in none of that. Because my lessons taught me what's going on. That's why I advocate, look, even if you don't want to study the lessons and live them out, just learn them. At least become familiar with what the teachings is so that we can say that we did this for a reason. Because my father didn't die for nothing. You know what I mean? Like, we really did this. Because my thing is, if you teach this as hard as he did, you die in three and a half years. Hmm. I'm talking about a law that founded the 5%. You know what I mean? You teach that hard. God damn. Righteous gang. Bang, bang. You, you know what I mean? They're coming for you. Hmm. So, you know what I mean? We striving to be a body of people that teach different elements of it so that everybody can rise up together. And that's what this is all about. Because in those two books, that's part two of the How to Hustle and Win, which is part one. And it was really meant to lead you to knowledge itself. Because it's like a school curriculum. Because I know that school was miseducating. Because while I was doing all this, I was teaching for 15 years hmm. in the public school system. I did all this what, what, while what being a school teacher. What did you teach? Yo, every. Every, every subject. Every. Mm. When you teach third through fifth grade, you teach them reading, language arts, math, science, social studies, and you take them outside to play. I see you've got a children's <laughs> book, Real Life is No Fairy Tale, right. by right. Sushan Goss. There you go, my teacher name. Two, Two people. Two Horizons Press. We made another company, too. That's the name. That's, a new, that's, that's how we sell to the schools. Mm. How to hustle and win. Two Horizons Press. Man, you think they're going to buy some books from Supreme Understanding? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> See? But you camouflage it and two... And that sounds like some old... Yeah, see? Curriculum. All these he, are the he, books he from Two Horizons he Press. He he can. Yeah, he can't be Supreme Understanding out loud. He got to... You know, what is it? Horizon Press? Two, two Horizons, Horizons Press, yeah. Press. Two Horizons Press. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> and then, they, but then you also have Supreme sounds, Design. Sounds colonizing. nice and wholesome. <laughs> yeah, two sounds horizons. Sounds nice and colonized. Absolutely, right? Yeah, we here for the schools, for the teachers. Yeah. We publishing old books like the African Abroad, like which is literally like a hundred years old. That's Two Horizons Press too. It's a it's a reprint. Like this book was written by one of Garvey's um, lieutenants, right? Mm. This man documented, and I'm talking about over a hundred years ago. This man documented the Black history of the entire world. Literally, he went over every empire over the world. He's like, yo, they started out black. This is over 100 years ago that he wrote this book, and nobody's seen this book. The book is like 800 pages. This is two volumes. Mm. I literally just republished it because I believed in it. Mm. I literally was like, yo, this is a, I like this. Why don't this exist? Why don't nobody know this exists? Mm. And so, like, that's the beautiful thing about when you start really controlling and you start moving into, like, you know, self-empowerment. It's like, well, what do I believe in? What do I care about? What are my things that I want to give to the world? I'm a real historian. Like, I mean, you know, I'm, so dope. I like having fun. I like doing everything everybody else do. But when I met the science of history and Malcolm said it's the most rewarding subject, man, I, I see in it because in history, I could see what we're going through right now. Man, you know the shit we're going through with Popeyes and Chick-fil-A, man. You know they went through this shit with motherfucking Coke and Pepsi. Right. You remember the Coke and Pepsi shit? Taste oh, yeah. test. Let's see if you can tell which one tastes like what the fuck. And then Coke had another Coke, and then there was a new formula, and there was a right. new formula. Yo, they ain't been the same since they took the Coca out. Right. That's the only thing that made people want to drink Coke was Coca. That's what made you do it. But after they took the Coca out, listen, Coke ain't never marketed to you on what they taste like, have they? Have you ever heard Coke do a marketing on what they taste like? No. It's just about feeling good. 
They're just selling you a feeling. So my challenge is, right, for us, we got to learn how to sell our feelings. We got to learn how to make people want to feel like this. Mm. We got to learn how to make smart feel good. Because mm. right. motherfuckers are scared to be smart right now. They're like, that shit like it's going to feel and bad. It, and it wasn't always like that. Like, no. Like this, my, this guy made it cool. You made it cool. Like it used to be cool to be smart. Remember? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, 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 um, it, like safe sex. Uh, yeah. It got to be you. And intelligent you know, hood yourself. Yeah. Right. The intelligent oh, hood love. Yeah, like you, the didn't, you didn't want to be the shit. kid. You didn't want to be the derelict in class that stayed back. Hell no, you get made fun of. Class. Yeah, you got clowned for that. You got to bring that back. Make now, fun you know, now it seems like the whole, I, I don't know if it's like no child left behind, but now you got <laughs> the one or two smart kids in school that are trying I'm to pay attention. You. And everybody else is being down. Yep. Let me tell you, I'm, as a school teacher, I'm going to tell you right now, I left the school system because the school system is designed to make kids hate school. It ain't designed to give your kids no great experience and right. open them up for the future. Don't, don't even, we can't even act like that's what's really going designed on. Designed to make them hate. Hate it. Hate it. Sit there and shut up, little boy or little girl, whatever you is. I'm going to respect your pronoun, but I ain't going to respect your motherfucking heart. You know what I mean? This this was going on right now. They're gonna administrate them into a whole new form of slavery because the school to prison pipeline real. Right. What it is is by third grade they got it designed to where the kids ain't gonna be able to read, or they ain't gonna want to read. They don't. They don't even teach cursive writing anymore. I had to teach my daughter how to write Man, cursive. Listen, they don't even teach kids how to use Google, That's and they got crazy. a phone. They don't. They they don't. They don't teach penmanship and stuff in school. You anymore. remember when we used to have, we used to learn how to use the uh, library, the Dewey Decimal System? Dewey yeah. Decimal. Remember that. That's crazy Remember shit. Remember when they tried, Ooh, they were what? trying to teach niggas the metric system and oh, they gave shit. up. They yeah, just like that. The Americans ain't fucking with that. But now the whole rest of the world, that's what they fuck with, the metric system. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we still do with the inches and the... Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do in our kids. You seen that new math? The new math where they do like 18 extra steps for you to do 3 plus 3? Yeah. That shit, I think, is really designed to fuck the kids up because this was happening. Nobody with money or power is sending these kids to the schools to teach this shit. Mm-hmm. This is public schools we're talking about. In private schools, they're teaching business ownership, gardening, fucking cooking fucking sorbet, and whatever the fuck they teach in the high... I don't know. I don't come from this life. I don't want anybody to think I know. I was learning... I just said cooking sorbet. That, that literally a, makes no sense. It was a requirement to take Latin in my, in my school. They required us to take Latin so that we would be able to... No, it was me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, Equidistance, that means equal. I just want to throw this out there about math. You see, talking about new math and all that. I discovered a type of math that's an old type of math that is very simplistic. And if they would teach this, yo, people would probably fuck with math more. It's called Vedic math. I seen that. Check out Vedic math. Look into Vedic math. Yo, it just simplifies shit. Crazy and it, and, it, and it works for everything like mm. algebra, like yeah. all kind of shit. And yo, I'm like, these fucking bastards. Like, if they would have taught me this kind of math when I was a kid, I probably wanted to be a mathematician or something because it would have been easier. But the way they teach it to you is so fucking confusing. Well, you don't even want to fuck with that they, shit. They teach it to you in a way to make you feel bad. You, you designed to be a, feel like a failure in the school system at some point. So at some point, you're going to opt out. They used to say that a third grade kid started one and not being in the school no more. Now it's as early as first grade. And first grade, I was teaching the kids, was like, fuck school. You're in first grade? You, well, you're five. Oh, I'm sorry, you're eight. Okay, that explains it. That explains it. Because you're eight in first grade. Something went wrong here. Me, you know what I mean? Like, let, let, me, let me ask you this. Because now you, now you said you taught in the public school system, right? Now, I have a girlfriend who, who was also a teacher. And... Her biggest problem was the, you know, the kids and, you know, like just the kids not being disciplined. She's like, first of all, she's like, first of all, you got kids coming to school who haven't eaten breakfast. And, and, you yeah. know, there's just there's a lot going on just, you True. know, in our own, you know, in our own soci, you know, in our own sociological system. That, I, I that's really that. making it hard. And then you want to talk to the parents. You got the parents coming to class. They smell like weed. They ready to fight. Yo. It, it's like, I hear all know. that. You know what, though? I was always the teacher who, if the parents smell like weed, they never wanted to fight me. 
I was always a teacher that if you came in with your rollers and your flip flops on, I ain't never had no judgment for you. I was a teacher that used to go to the kids' houses. I was a teacher that used to get the kids' hair done. You know what I mean? I know this kid can't get her hair done. I know this boy smelling pissy. They might not have no washing machine or no running water to wash his clothes. I get him a new outfit. You know what I mean? Because teachers make more than the people that they serve. Always. You know what I mean? If you work in a public school, you make more than the medium income of the people that got to put their kids in the public school. So you got a little bit of extra money. And if you really need to, you can ask for it back from your, your school. You can ask for it back. So when people be like, oh, I don't know how to take care of these kids. It's just like when I hear people be like, oh, man. When I hear black people be like, oh, man, we, we so fucked up. We can't do this. Look at what we do. Look at we, 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 we. A motherfucker say that thinking about the last experience they had with somebody else. That's what they really refer to. When they be like, we fucked up, they're talking about them and another motherfucker recently. So if you couldn't manage a group, you love saying, oh, black people fucked up. No, you just failed at management. Me, I excelled at management. I love my babies. My babies love me. I still see them to this day. And they see me in the streets and it's still love. The parents see me as still love. And that's what we want to encourage teachers to do because that attitude that, oh, I don't understand these people. They poor. They poor. That's all the fuck it is. And poor people do poor people shit. And if you got love for it and you know where they come from, you're going to be able to relate to it and show it the love it need to grow. Yo, listen, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk a little more. Maybe just talk general stuff as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Keep okay. the God here with us. He's a, He's a, he's a witty mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Godcast. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Welcome back to You Know What I Mean, Godcast and Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. God free. We got our guest, Supreme Understanding in the house, writer, publisher, uh, hustler, winner. <laughs> <laughs> How you, God? I'm great, man. I'm great. It's a beautiful vibe here. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, shit. Great to have you, God. Uh, we got books in the house, man. We, we got, got a whole library on the show. I stashed a few of them in my bag. I, yeah, they yeah. gifts, yeah, man. I we got gifts. Down too, yeah, I'll, I'll put them back up here just to show them okay, off, yeah, but they're yours. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, listen, before we continue, make sure you subscribe to the show. You click the, uh, the bell so you get subscriptions. Also, to donate to the show, go to cash.me slash dollar sign. You got it. Mean, patreon.com slash you're not a mean or you're not a mean.com slash support bounty.com slash you're not a mean we appreciate all that you do thank you um right on so yeah we we were talking with the god and you know he he writes his own book he publishes his own book i like this one the hood hood health, health handbook a practical guide to health and wellness in the urban community right Right, because we sick. <laughs> like, stay away from the Popeye's chicken. You, we, nah, we was even for people to eat like that. Like, yo, you got to, you know, maybe you need to get some salad with it. You feel know I me? Mean? Just, right. just, just balance it out. Like, because people going to want chicken, man. I feel like we made the chicken. Think about it. Who else but original people going to make a bird that can't get away? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we did that thousands of years ago. We did that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and figured out how to fry them and all that. Like, but... Nowadays, the chicken ain't the same. It ain't even got no legs. Right. You know what I mean? You don't know where these people getting these chickens from. They can sell it to you for $2. Come on now. What I understand, they take the beaks off and all that. Right. Kind of it's shit. scary. It's like, a monster. Injecting the hormones. Like well, the, ho the hormones in the chicken and the meat is, you know, contributes a lot to fibroids in, in women. It's, it says, this book covers losing weight without dieting, exercising without equipment, sex ed, Beginners and advance. Eliminating toxins from your home. Yeah. How to have a healthy pregnancy. Preventing diabetes slash cancer in children. Treating H ADHD and dyslexia. Um, beating drug and alcohol addiction, which mm -hmm. is something we're going to talk about in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of drug and alcohol addiction. Um, Weed, caffeine, and junk food, understanding mental disorders, beating depression and bipolar, right. managing stress, Ooh. anxiety, and emotions, traditional versus Western medicine, natural beauty tips that work, tattoos, piercings, and cosmetic surgery, first aid and survival tactics, starting an urban garden. Nice. I, you know what? We just talked uh, last week. I was talking about I had proposed that, you know, maybe we can... Like, we as a people could just take on initiative to just go outside and just 
clean the trash up off the ground in the urban areas. And it was like, who knows? Maybe from there it could turn into planting grass. And from there it could turn into planting flowers. From there it could turn into planting gardens. Mm -hmm. This is great. Can I see this? Mm -hmm. Word, I'll take this. Can I give you a (laughs) (laughs) You took the science one one too? You took the science one too? My books. Yo, these these, these books get nabbed, for real. Yeah, definitely People breaking cars, yo, yo, to get these books, I'm not lying. well, it's a thing. Um, can I give you a little WB. jewel? Like something that's real simple. Do you know you can use a food stamp card to go into a place like Walmart that sells fruit trees and buy a fruit tree and plant it in whatever patch of grass you got in your property right now and be growing fruit within two years? Hmm. Wow. wow. Off a food stamp card. You know Damn. what I mean? $15 plant. So, you know, so, it's just like people just don't know. Just don't and if you don't know, it's like you, you kind of like you a victim. Knowledge because is you, power. Yeah. You know, they say that people perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. So we just wanted to make sure it was available. Okay. So how are you available? How do people contact you? How do you, you know what I mean? Shadows for a long time. You know, I've been away for a minute. Um, just getting my life together because I didn't want to be, you know, if, you, if you're too visible and you got a bunch of defects, then everybody following you going to reproduce your defects. Hmm. They going to act like you, talk like you. And if you got a bunch of bitterness to you, they're going to be bitter just like you. Hmm. So I wanted to make sure that what we was giving people was love and education and healing. So these books been out for like what? Since 10 years now. Mm. 10 years since the one with me and you put out 10 years ago. Um, and so the website's always been the same. They could go on Amazon. They can go into any well, black bookstore, Supreme Design Online, uh, or SupremeUnderstanding.com. Um, but I really want people to go into black bookstores. Find a black-owned bookstore in your city. We got a listing on our site on SupremeDesignOnline.com where they can find whoever's selling black books in their city and whoever's a black-owned bookseller. Because um, I remember them days when there was bookstores to go to. Right. You know what I mean? When that was a cool thing to do. Yeah. Or when there was people in the corner selling books and they could talk to you about what's in every book. Like, right. people, you know, we, we got to bring that back. Yeah. That'll change things. I want to do that. Do you do like IG, Twitter, and all that type of shit? Yeah, you could look me up at Supreme Understanding. Um, and what we want to push people to do is, like I always say, like I'm, I'm, I'm an educator, so I came up with a curriculum. But really the best teachers are the people to take these books, and they be in prisons. I'm talking about teaching, like changing lives. Mm. Lil Boosie was giving out, not even giving the book out. Lil Boosie was in, in a prison when he was locked up. We had sent him some of our books. People was writing us saying he won't let us keep the book. He keep on asking for it back, mm. but he was teaching because he was letting he was lending it out, and then he'd, he'd get it back. And somebody be like, "Yo, I gotta get get the book." Mm. Um, so I really so. like, yeah, I want to push people being able to sell books and have the books on their own, and to be representatives of of a way of thinking, a way of way of living, like a righteous way that we can all. I mean, you know, who is it that can't agree on being righteous? Let me know. Like, I want to know. You're not righteous. Tell me. Okay, let me know up front that you're not righteous. I want to know that you're not. But other than that, we righteous family. So if somebody wants to write a book, they what they go to Supreme Design Online. They, they can hit us up, or they can go to ProvenPublishing.com. That's the website that's just for us helping people get their books published. Say so, that again. ProvenPublishing.com. ProvenPublishing.com. Proven dot formulas. Com. We tested them out. We made sure they work. This this the formulas that we use to put all this out. Right. Yeah. So we test. Any, I'm not gonna give it to nobody unless I made sure it worked. Right. You know, I got tested out. So we wanted to give people life because right now the people, you know. Yeah. We're going through it. We're going through it. Well, we yeah. definitely appreciate you bringing the books up here and, you know what I mean? Yeah, and traveling up. Having them up. I, I and, love and, it. And, and sharing your knowledge. Um, yeah, I guess you could just stay with us, you know, because we, we, we're, we're going to talk about some just other things going on in the news and shit right now. Let's get to it. Um, so one of the things that we were speaking oh, yeah. on. I got to put my glasses on. Oh, shout out to David Ford. Check out what I did. Remember those beautiful shades that uh, that we were gifted last week? Well, mm. I turned mine into my prescription glasses because oh, in real shit. life, I need glasses. And oh, um, I never wear my glasses because I just can never find any cool ones. But thanks to David Ford. Mm. And- yeah, yeah. See, I wear. There you go. There you go. I can, be, I can be cool when I pull out my reading glasses on the guy. Okay. okay. Thank you, David. So, so, something that came across my feed and then, you know, I get into my bag on Twitter. Um, I came across a tweet that said, uh, 
Purdue Pharma told CNN it is involved in settlement talks with regards to a trial in Ohio where over 2,000 municipalities and Native American governments are suing the company. And then I came across uh, another tweet that said, um, hang on, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it. Well, basically, the, the premise of the other tweet was the amount. That's, that's what really got me, like, Twitter finger and like, right. oh. So, basically, Big Pharma is uh, set to pay out 10 to $12 billion in, um, in settlement for, um, to the state of Ohio and over 2,000 municipalities within Ohio for their um, opioid epidemic. So... I got on Twitter and I said, well, who should black people sue yeah. for the crack era? Well, hang Word. on. We're we, we we moving a little fast. Are we? Yes, because oh, okay. also they, they also, in Oklahoma, okay. $572 million right. dollars okay. was just awarded to these motherfuckers mm. for their opioid fucking shit in that particular state. Okay. Again, what's the fucking... Um, you know, the, 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 the line here, the common denominator here is that these are like really white places. Yeah. You know right. I mean? Ohio, Oklahoma, yeah, not yeah. that black people don't live there, but when we talk about the opioid crisis, we know who's being affected by that. Right. Oh, well, well our, our former governor, Christy, uh, Chris Christie, he was, you know, he was adamant about fighting the opioid addiction and, and, uh, you know, imposing harsh sentences right. for, you know, opioid sellers and, and things of that nature or people, you know, misusing. So in a way, this is like drugs. their reparations for <laughs> the epidemic that was thrust upon their community. Segue now okay. into what you oh, were I'm saying. Sorry. I don't want to segue. I'm <laughs> sorry. I the mean, crack. I, but see, I, I, that's... Basically, that's how I reacted on Twitter. I saw the first tweet like, oh, so who should black people sue for, you know, right. the crack era? And um, I don't want to spoil the Dave Chappelle show, if you, the new stand-up. If you haven't seen it by now, you should have seen it by now. Shame on you if you haven't. But, um, you know, he said something which I thought about, too. Like, you know, we didn't get, we didn't get this. We got... Just say no. Yep. We got crack as whack. Yep. You know, we got three strike laws. We got all of this, you know, all of this harsh treatment basically criminalized for being sick and, and being addicted to crack. And we saw we were we see, we saw all the destruction that it did within our community. So And we know the culprits, see, they're able, they yeah. trace their opioids to certain companies. Mm -hmm. So the the one, the company that we trace our shit to is the United States of America Government. Incorporated. Period. Right. Okay? Incorporated. Because this is a fucking corporation. Make yes. no fucking mistake so about then, it. So then I said, hmm, I wonder, I wonder if that is something that could you know, be in, uh, I, I guess, added to the docket of the reparation argument and would, you know, would that possibly give us a, a better leg to stand on? Like, look, I mean, granted, we got all, we got four legs at this See, point. I would feel like that's its own thing. I wouldn't even try to attach that necessarily to a reparations. Like, because I feel like that is almost it's, it's part of the bigger. It, it, it is no, it, it it is its own thing, and you know, with, in regards to slavery and the you know and mm -hmm. the generational effects of it. But I'm thinking like right now in this moment, you know, we know like it's it's the worst kept secret now that the government flooded the urban areas with crack. Like we know this now. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, and the only reason why I said that is because, you know, is that something that could just, because right now what they want to do is they, they keep dismissing the merit of the reparation argument like that was 400 years ago. Like, y'all good, y'all, you know, that ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Like, okay, well, here's something that has, that affects 
living people today, is this something that we could possibly demand a reparation for? I mean, hey, or a law, maybe, okay, remove the word reparation. Did they people? Did they pay them to ski syphilis victims? They just apologized. Did they pay? I don't know if they paid them. They didn't give him any money. They just Remember, I think Clinton I apologized to so the last no survivor. Right they just no said money. sorry. But so why give these these fucking you know white? fentanyl babies white because they're white fucking yeah, you know because they're babies. white white uh, entitlement because they're the sons of oh, the politicians. What's the shit? Um, that's the politician did in the what's program. The like the, uh, the 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 Percocets and the. And the Zans and the Xanax yeah, and what's yeah, the, the oh the oxycodone that's the one yeah that's one of the ones that's the fucking mm -hmm. oh man like all of that type of shit is what they fuck with um, don't forget that you can buy the prescription drug like fentanyl right and use it to cut everything else fentanyl they're using fentanyl to cut coke they use it right. to cut dope right mm -hmm. now that's why you're seeing so many people ODing right now right. even if they tell you about Prince right what they say Prince OD off of they say he OD'd off of pills cut with fentanyl. Whatever. That's what they say. Say, say, right. That's what they say. Right, right. right. You know what I mean? But that means somebody could have swapped out what he had. He might have been thinking he's taking a sleeping pill. He might have been thinking he's taking some melatonin. Next thing you know, he out for the night night. Because that's literally the level of game that they playing with us right now. So you seen the thing it had they saying we got fentanyl in it now. And that's crazy. That's like, crazy. Like, they, they trying to make a zombie movie in real life. Cause if y'all ever seen how people act when they on there, they be looking like zombies. Like, yeah. like, see, see, to do some shit like that, right? To actually put like, they saying they find it, coke or heroin and all this and weed, like, that's just straight devious. Like, like, <laughs> like you're not even making money. Like, like on the business side of that, you're losing money if yeah. you do that. I you say know that. Right? I say this. Not say because you you're not money. selling the weed for any more. Here's the thing, I think they is making money, right? Like, for example, McDonald's. How can they afford to sell you all this for a dollar, right? Because they in business they're with really, the medical industry. That too. And right. They're, and they're a real estate they company. They get paid right. the other way. So that's, like, that's what I'm, you get paid in a different way. That's yeah, what I'm you saying. You get paid on all the sick fat people. Right, right. Everything is Sometimes together. it's not about, um, it's not about the money side of it's it. It's not like, about would, the advance. Sometimes it's not about the cash. It's about right. the equity. There you go. It's the deeper so, things happen. So I was watching some shit, right? And it, this was actually a white dude was talking about this. And he was like, he said, yo, why do you think porn is free? Mm. He said, porn is free because, first of all, like a lot of sex and all that will help to lower your vibration. Right. And, and, and basically stop you from right. being the best that you can be. Right, even boxers, you're not supposed right. to fight for two weeks fuck before yeah, fighting, yeah. all this type of shit, right? So they're like, "Yo, porn, but porn is free." You know, all the ads on there, some rinky dink ads. They can't possibly be making a lot of money from that. So what? What is it about then? Mm. He's like, "What is it about?" Because they, it's not about making money per se from that. You know what I mean? You ever look at these fucking? Porn sites? Never. Of course. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. the fuck? I do. What are these things? Well, listen. I'm, you know, I'm vibrating low. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to drag myself and do some research. <laughs> yeah, it's all research. For six hours at a time. It's all research. Porn hub. Wait, wait. Trying to find I got, I got, a, I got a funny porn. It's all research. I got a funny porn story. <laughs> okay, so we need the, to hear this. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Funny porn no, story, that's where no, It's a real short no, <laughs> it's, it is. it's a real short story. So the the cat <laughs> You gonna make that man feel bad. I'll quit I'll quit. Never, never mind, never mind. It's a real short story. Get it? Never mind. Short story. Never okay. mind. Never mind. No, no, that's a uh, new, new. Okay, look. So there's a category called Bukaki, right? Bukaki, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know that. Know. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's, wait, wait. Just recently, and I mean recently. Double K. Like in the past month, <laughs> I learned that that was how you pronounce it. All of this time, I thought it was pronounced butt cake. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was butt on that butt cake all over the <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know, I, 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 I say 
situation for you to be saying it any kind of way. It was like Japanese. Like, I was watching a point and he did the butt cake. I literally, I literally, I don't want to do the butt cake. I literally just learned in the month of August of 2019. Wow. The correct get up on your porn terminology. What it takes See, to I'm, get more I'm often. I'm out the loop, man. I don't know, man. Yo, you want to be in the loop. Wait, you know that, right? When they go, no way. Yeah. way. Yeah. I don't know niggas got that much yeah, damn so they having like, no way. Hey, hey. No, hey, hold on. I got some hoes. Like, like, they be decorating like, birthday like, cakes, man. What? I got some homie. Uh, I got I got some homie porn stars. They actually have what they call fluffers, like you know, because because it's really like action and shit, no. like. Like you gotta cut. It's not Nick. We gotta stunt Nick. You gotta you gotta set up the camera. No, that's not his dick. There's actually people. <laughs> these cockies. There's actually women called fluffers that like you know like I guess like he told me when it, sometimes when they when they have like gang bang scenes right, and right. stuff like while they're setting up camera and changing the camera angles there'll be chicks that'll just keep coming right, sucking them off the hard and, yeah, and it's like and action and then they gotta you, you never know, heard of a fluffer? They get right back into the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a job. Like, 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 yo, that's you know, you're disrespecting somebody. Like, psh. it's basically the equivalent. It was a fluffer on it. It's the equivalent of the person that comes in and like a fluffer on it. Runs and grabs the tennis ball. Right, right, right. On 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 they just grab the balls. On a T-rated fucking porn. Like, it wasn't but like they have. Hey, but the tricks that they have, they have tricks where it's. you can't be coming. Oh, come on, man. It's anyway, like, that was my little short story. Okay, I'm done. Off next buck topic. Cake. Buck cake. So, so crack reparations. <laughs> From buck cake. Buck crack <laughs> reparations. Buck cake to crack. Okay. I buck, thought. I thought. Speaking of crack. I thought I was going to talk about it. Like, like, we all know um, the story of, you know, Oliver North and, and, mm-hmm. and Ronald Reagan and, yep. and the. Iran Contra and the Freeway Ricky the, Ross, the, 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 right. the, the, yeah. the guns for drugs and the the, the pipeline that was specifically mm-hmm. created by the CIA. Mm-hmm. You know, the American government right. basically in Oakland, would be the Johnson and Johnson would be the plaintiff in this action. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't there be a way? Well, no, to, they'd be the defendant. We're the plaintiffs. Oh, correct. They're the, yeah. the, the right on, brother. I don't know why, but you look kind of like Oprah with them glasses on. <laughs> oh shit! No, but in a good way. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, 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 I heard, That's sophisticated. Uh, yeah, like you look like like money, like like yeah. like Oprah I money. Like I could smart. see. I could see. Smart Oprah money. money. That I Oprah look, money, boy. Yeah. Like smart. Yeah. Like I'm sitting, motherfuckers on That's the couch. That's a very Oprah shade of lipstick. But but you look like an Oprah that that like. The Weight Watchers is working. Kind of, you know? <laughs> I got daughters. I'm just I, saying. I look like Oprah that smoked weed. <laughs> yeah, like like a little cooler Oprah, and okay. you know, yeah. a little rough around the edges Oprah. Oprah, Oprah that'll fight you. You know, the kind of Oprah, Oprah that'll fight you. Get fried you know chicken on the ball. I think you know what the episodes. Gemini woman. The episodes, the past episodes where I have pulled out my glasses once or twice. I've seen that in the comments, like Oprah. giving me Oprah vibes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm telling you, I just look like. Okay. Oprah? Oh. <laughs> Is this the home network? I love Brad. Oh, Pre Pre-corn. your seats. Pre-chicken wings. And an opioid for you and a chicken wing for you. <laughs> and bukkake. Ah, <laughs> a cake for well, you. Buck- yeah. Yeah, buck- <laughs> cake. Oh, man. Okay. Um... So yeah, so so the American government would be the defendants in that action, and we the the, the wait, you know those <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> people <laughs> of um, you know this is serious America. Legal matter. This is serious legal matter. Okay, come on, for real. Real. this is a come plausible on, case. That we we gotta get back on track. Like, like, like we gotta look into this. Like, like, like the wind is no, I'm dead ass, ass. folks. Always. Uh, uh, honor their treaties. First of all, law is law is is set by precedent. Okay. So now, when one precedent happens, this is going to create a tumble of a bunch of states. Are I would start. say we're better yep. going after Krispy Kreme because mm. Krispy Kreme paid eleven million dollars in reparations to the Jewish community. You can look this up. Wow. Damn. Wow. I say. Well, I know they have clogged a lot of hearts in the black fucking community. Hell yeah. Them they, Krispy Kreme hell niggas. Yeah. They're at least passing dope. Oh, oh, the light is on. The light is on. You ever see that shit? Exciting shit. I'm going to tell you.
The light is on. If y'all don't know, that means they got some fresh. Oh. They just need some when fresh. When they're heating up. If you go buy a Krispy Kreme and the light is on, that means they got some fresh straight out the oven. He lives oven. in Atlanta. See, you, you haven't been spoiled Are by the Krispy experience. Kreme better than Cinnabon? I don't yeah. Think they yeah, it is. Krispy yeah. Kreme's better than Cinnabon? It is. Yeah. But I don't want Krispy to see that Popeye's Chick-fil-A guy. It's started on this package. Okay. Figure out but, what you owe. So you see, anyway, still love you. listen, we got to look into this because like I said, precedence with law is, you know, somehow we'll probably find out, oh, the government is exempt because it's the government or some shit like that. But maybe not. You know what I mean? Maybe they can be sued. I'm, I'm looking into it. You know? I'm already looking into you it. You got to take it to the UN or some shit like that. Yeah. Like how Malcolm was moving. Johnny Cochran was that was his last project. He was gonna go reparations against the U.S. Then he just died. Because hmm. mm. he never lost cases. Mm. <laughs> he always never. won. He always won. <laughs> never lost cases. Never did. Things hey, make gonna have to kill him because he's gonna, he nah, gonna he win dead. this case. Mm. All of a sudden dead because well, he's gonna take them to court. The U.S. We about to wrap up for the for this week. Um, Supreme. Appreciate you coming by. Yeah, great. Once again, tell the people the website where to get the books. If if we got any writers out there, I just want to say one thing. What's that? Thing? Y'all are doing something amazing for the culture. Y'all know that? Like for real? Like, cause you know it's nice to be smart and funny at the same time, and motherfuckers think you can't be funny. Mm. Motherfuckers really dumb and funny, for the most part out here. Right. You know what I mean? This Being able true. to be smart and funny—that's some healthy shit. You know and. You know, you raising up a whole generation of people. It's like, oh shit! And if you could make that cool, inter- yeah. If that's, you could make yeah. that cool, Hell yeah. yeah. That's how you win yeah, because you ain't black be people. Idiot. You know what I mean? We gravitate to what's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Um, we, no, we we invent what's cool. That's right. Right. Holla. So again, your websites. SupremeUnderstanding.com. Mm-hmm. SupremeDesignOnline.com and Proven Publishing if you want to get a book published. Yeah. And you can start your own bookstore with us. We're putting bookstores back in communities everywhere. And it can start with you just pulling books out your trunk and going into the barbershop and beauty salon. You wow. Know, bringing knowledge back, like back in the old days. Sell some cut fruit with it, you know, because we're teaching how to hustle and win. Make some money. You know, nice. self employment, self empowerment. <laughs> yeah, well, that's beautiful. Dope. All right. Well, yeah. Another great one. Another yes. great one. We thank y'all for joining us. Yeah. Once again, for the Not A Mean God cast and Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. God free. Hey. Hey.